This is going to be a compilation of everything I knit and crochet. Well, most things that I knit and crochet in 2023. A quick disclaimer, I know that there is some gentle controversy over whether or not everything I knit in a year or everything I made in a year videos are appropriate to make. I personally love seeing those videos. I find them to be a great source of inspiration. Now, if you're the kind of person that's going to get stressed out seeing how much somebody made and you're going to feel bad because maybe you only made one or two items this year, which is totally appropriate. There's no one right way to do a hobby and not everybody has the same amount of time. Having time to do a hobby is a privilege. So that being said, if you're the kind of person that's going to get stressed out by some of the stuff I'm going to say here, click away, go to a different video. You do not need to be watching this. You do not need more stress in your life. You are doing amazing. And I'll see you in the next video. For everyone else that's left, let's get into it. I have minimal organization to this, honestly, so I'm just going to start showing items and I'm going to hang up my top three items on the wall behind me as I'm making the video. And I'm going to go in chronological order as well by category. So category one, knit garments. This is the first item I made in 2023. I casted this on on New Year's, and so this is truly the first item that I made in the new year. I'll be honest, I think it's mostly downhill from here because this is the most technically difficult item that I made this year. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to make because I think it was on like 2.75 or 2.5 millimeter needles. What I like about this item, what I like about you, I love the lace knit or cable knit, whatever you want to call it, motif. I love that motif. I think it's gorgeous. And I love the eyelet detailing around the neckline. Stunning. Things I don't love. This was my first time working with cotton and I had no idea how much it was going to shrink. I was not prepared for that. And so this is a super duper crop top that I definitely have to wear other shirts with or just like the highest waisted pants in the world. Oh, I also did this a little different because I did not add sleeves in the pattern. This was supposed to have sleeves, but I personally like the way that it fell on me without sleeves. So I just left it sleeveless and kept it with a rolled hem that rolls inwards. I know this is already the first piece we're talking about, but this is one of my top three for the whole year. So I'm putting it on the wall. You're going to see a pretty common trend this year with me making things out of cotton. I ended up buying an insane amount of cotton during a yarn shopping spree and it's taking forever to use it all up. I wish I didn't buy all this. I was just like, it's on sale for a dollar fifty per ball. I'll just buy a million of them. I was going for like a chill coastal vibe, like a foggy morning on the coast. And well, on its own, I love this sweater. I think it's really cute. I love the construction. I really like the pattern. It was my first time doing a v-neck. I don't love the shape. It falls at an awkward point on my body and I find it very difficult to style because of that. So I think I really need to challenge myself to try to style this in different ways and seeing what I can come up with. I do also really love the color and honestly, I love the material. It's very cheap cotton, but I'm okay with it. It's pretty soft. Next up, we have the halibut sweater. I'm already smiling. I love this sweater so much. My husband was begging for me to make him a sweater. He really wanted me to make him a sweater. And so I finally caved in a year ago and was like, all right, I will make you a sweater. We're going to pick a design. And because it was my first time making a sweater for him, or I think anyone else, that was the first time I made a sweater for anyone else, I really wanted to do it right. And so I ended up making one for myself first. So we have matching sweaters. The fit is amazing. It's perfect. The drape is perfect. My only complaint is the superwash material. I'm not as into anymore. I was pretty into it when I started working with it. Now it's it's not my favorite, but I still really like it. I think if I was going to do this again, I would do it in a non-superwash merino wool. This was another attempt to use up some of the cotton yarn. Oh, his head's falling off. We're just going to take that right off. That's unnecessary. <laughs> Things I don't like, this cotton material weirdly stiffens up sometimes and loosens up other times depending on the color that it is. So I have the pink version of this, which is very drapey and flowy, and it got really soft after the first time blocking it. This one got stiff, almost like it was starched or something. Um, and I actually accidentally threw this into the washer and it shrunk a lot. So it does not fit me in a cute way anymore. There's this. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I should say that. It's okay. I just don't 
go for it, especially since it shrunk. I don't wear it at all anymore. This tank top, I was terrified to make. I had never done a knit tank top before, and I was really risking it for the biscuit on this because I was like, I don't know if I'm even going to like wearing a knit tank top. It took a lot longer than expected because it was a smaller gauge, and in my head, I was just like, oh, it's just a tank top. It'll whip right up. Uh Uh-uh. Well, it didn't take forever, and for a lot of people, this didn't take long. And maybe if I returned to this, I would think, oh, that didn't take long. But at the time, my expectation going in was like, this is going to be like a week. I'll get this done in a week. No, it took took multiple weeks. (laughs) The good things about this, I ended up loving the shape. I like the neckline. I like how it fits. I actually put elastic in the collar and strung it around the arms. So the collar all the way around on the front and back has an elastic string tied in. And then the sleeves also have elastic tied into them. That was a good move because with tank tops, I think fit is everything and it had a tendency to stretch out. I think the fit is great minus one major problem, which is that it is too short for my liking. I ran out of yarn. I was too lazy to buy more. It was long enough at the time. And again, I wasn't experienced enough with cotton to know how much it would shrink. You'd think I would have learned my lesson. Big life lesson I have learned now. I understand. I would absolutely love to make this again though. I adore the pattern. I really like the silhouette. I would totally do this again. I had some black merino wool laying around after I'd finished up my halibut sweater, but before starting on my husband's and I was really, I was gonna have to buy more anyways to make my husband's sweater. So I decided to use some of it to make a sweater vest. I had not made a sweater vest before. I have not made a sweater vest since. I don't know why I haven't made a sweater vest since. I freaking love this. I freaking love the sweater vest. This is amazing. My major complaint about this is that it is too short in the front and too long in the back and it fits my body really awkwardly. And I think I need to avoid doing short row shaping on necklines because every time I do that, I feel like the piece always fits me very awkwardly. If you don't know, a lot of patterns include short row shaping on the back neckline, and it kind of pushes that back neckline up with the intention that it'll push the front down a bit. It doesn't do that on my body, and I'm a bustier gal. I'm a triple D. And so that fabric has a ways to go before reaching the bottom of my body. So yeah, I need the front to be longer. So I would definitely adjust this pattern to fit my body a little bit better. But all in all, I really like this. I wear this often without anything underneath it. It was really fun to wear in the summer as my like work from home outfit. I don't want to call this a failed experiment, but this project did not meet expectations. And I do like the pattern for this and maybe I'd try making the pattern again with a different yarn. But I use cotton yarn for this and I think the gauge is just too tight because I wanted this to be flowy, cozy morning but instead it's very stiff, it's very heavy, and it doesn't feel very comfortable. And then something's really weird about the fit. Like it always wants to slide backwards off my body. It doesn't want to stay on in the position that I want it to stay on. So maybe that's a construction thing, but this is definitely not something I go to a lot. I keep going on yarn rampages and then instantly losing interest in the yarn. I hated working with this material. It made my teeth hurt. It was like a weird, gross sensory thing that I was not into. But once I washed it, I still don't love the feel of it when I like squish it right now. But when I'm wearing it, I'm completely unbothered by the feel of it. I actually like the feel of it. So that's super weird. I've never experienced something like that from a sensory standpoint. And I should show you the more interesting part. This is a cable knit motif. I just really wanted to make this sweater and I had this yarn laying around. So I was like, screw it. If it doesn't turn out good, whatever. At least I practiced it and I can make it again and do it better the second time. I would totally make this again. I also like love having the cables in the back because the front can be very simple and I can wear like a necklace with it. And then when you turn around, it's like, boom, interesting. And I actually do like the yarn. I like that the variegation in it is very subtle and it's not in your face. We have another project where I was trying to use up my material. I really love red and pink together. I think it's a fun color combo. This one is interesting. Well, I really like the silhouette and I like how it looks. My main complaint is I have no idea how to style this color wise. I don't have anything to style this with except for jeans. I think it'd be really cute if I had, I don't know, what would this be cute with? I don't, 
I'm not good at styling my knits, people, okay? I need to experiment a little bit more. My go-to is like silk dress, put a sweater on it. Jeans, put a sweater on it. These are not groundbreaking ideas. I love, I love this. I love the material. It's drapey and it's cashmere, so it's like hella soft. And it feels heavy without feeling stiff. My favorite combination. I fell into this color. I didn't love the variation in it. But the more I wear this, the more I like it. I was debating dyeing it a different color, but I think I'm actually just going to keep it as is. This was from my Perks of Being a Wallflower video. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it. It's the first YouTube video I made, and I'm really proud of that one. Now, I have two complaints about this piece. One is about the piece itself, and one is about styling it. So the complaint about the piece itself is I wish I would have made it just a tiny bit longer, like an inch longer. It's just a it's a smidge shorter than I want it to be just a little bit. So I definitely have to wear like high, high waisted stuff with this. The other complaint is about styling it. It's got a razor back front and back, and I don't own any bras that don't show through it, but this is definitely going in the top three for this year. Super proud of this piece. And the last piece in the category of knitted garments I have made for myself is a very simple raglan t-shirt i have slowly learned to appreciate variegated yarn variegated variegated yarn throughout the year and i kind of had to because i bought a ton of yarn so i bought this yarn in three different colors and made three different pieces with them oh my gosh am i forgetting a piece i am okay i'm gonna go grab the last the actual last piece that is so out of order but i made this year so i should probably show it um but we're gonna talk about this one first <laughs> I like this one. I think I was trying to go for like wider raglan seams. So normally I do thinner raglan seams that are like two stitches wide, maybe. And this one I did four. I kind of wish I went all out and did like six or even more than that and made it really bold. I actually really like wearing this top. It's comfortable. It's not too hot because it's mostly cotton. The only thing I don't love is the sleeve shape. I don't think it fits my arms in a way that I find very appealing. Yeah, I don't know what more there is to say about that. That's the only thing I don't love is how the sleeves fit on my arms. But everything else I'm totally chill with. Really like this. Basic easy. Okay, this is the actual last piece that I made in February. So it probably should have been the second or third item that I showed. I love this piece in theory. Things I don't love. I didn't end up loving the variegation in it just because it didn't go with a lot of my wardrobe. I made this piece because I needed something that I could walk in because I was having this issue when I went on walks in the winter where my thighs would get really cold, like no other part of my body, but just like my thighs. So I wanted like a vest I could throw on over a long sleeve t-shirt, but I was dumb and didn't think it through. It's a split hem. The hem rolls inward. So... It doesn't actually cover my thighs. It will continue rolling because I wear this on walks or I was wearing this on walks and it would continue rolling inward and inward more and more until it's not covering any of my body and it's just rolled onto itself and it looks ridiculous. I love this in theory. I will make something else in this silhouette because it's still a very functional piece and I will make it correctly this next time. <laughs> I think I'll honestly, if I make this again, do the whole thing ribbed so that there's like no chance of rolling. So yeah, that is actually the last piece in this category. I made two other knit garments. One was a sweater for a friend of mine and one was a sweater for my husband. And the one for my husband took for freaking ever because it's huge. Key learnings. Key learnings from this whole experience, just seeing my top three out here and trying to figure out like my bottom three. I'm gonna put my bottom three here. Okay, I have my bottom three laid out. Lessons I have learned from my bottom three. One, really think about construction before you make something so that you make it correctly and it doesn't end up ruining the whole piece that you spent a while on. Two, I should just donate the rest of that cotton yarn I have because I still have a ton of it and I keep making projects that I don't even love because I'm trying to use that yarn up. And three, thinking about how am I going to style a piece before I make it. What am I going to wear it with? Am I actually going to wear it that much? Lessons learned from my favorites. Spending a lot of time on something is absolutely worth it. Um, another lesson is self-drafting is amazing and there is absolutely a sense of pride and accomplishment when you make something that you know you 
did yourself, it does not mean that you have accomplished any less if you're following a pattern. I was so hesitant to follow patterns when I started getting into knitting in 2021. One, because I was intimidated by patterns, but two, because I didn't feel as accomplished. I felt like I was somehow cheating, which is in no way true because now I love knitting from patterns because I love celebrating those designers. These people are so talented and creative and they work very hard on these patterns. <sighs> Ooh, I think another takeaway this year is I want to start following the same pattern more than once. I've only done that with socks. I have not done that with full-on garments. I don't think that these rules apply to everybody, but just for myself, these are my takeaways. And I am like so thrilled that I freaking made this video because I did not think of that before. I have not taken time to sit down and review my knitting and think about what do I need to do differently to make next year even better. Okay, so that is the roundup for knitting garments. On to accessories. I am not going to rank my accessories because they're all perfect in every single way. I think I'll start with socks. Again, these are all worn pieces, so they don't look shiny and brand new. Sorry. <laughs> I should have at least like blocked these cute before I brought them out, but I just kind of washed them and didn't block them when I washed them because they're socks. They're going to go on my feet anyways. They don't need to look perfect when they're done washing anymore. Pair of socks. This was the first heel flap and gusset pair of socks that I made. I wanted to experiment with different sock techniques and heel flap and gusset became my favorite. I had previously only ever done German short rows and I don't love doing German short rows. I personally love the, the end result of a heel flap and gusset the most and I enjoy the process the most. These were interesting. I had every intention to embroider these, so it was a plain pair of white socks, and I wanted to embroider something on it, and I just realized that I'm not very good at embroidery while I was doing it, and I wasn't willing to put in the time and effort to embroider it really nicely. So I ended up just dip dyeing these in some dye that I had on hand, and they're like a ombre blue. It was just fun, and I do wear these a lot, as do I with all of my socks. This is a German short row heel pair of socks that I made for my husband, and we started a new tradition now where we go, when we go visit our family in Minnesota, there's a yarn shop that I really love in the Twin Cities, and they have some really beautiful hand-dyed sock yarn, so we go to that shop, and he gets to pick out one hank of hand-dyed sock yarn, and I will make a pair of socks for him, so... I think that's going to be a new tradition where he gets a new pair of socks every year or something. I don't know. Maybe that's a big commitment. So right now I'm working on another pair of socks for him because he wears these a lot. These are the Smart Heart socks and it is my absolute hands down favorite sock knitting pattern ever. I have zero motivation to make any other kind of sock. I just want to make Smart Heart socks for the rest of my life. And I love it. I was kind of nervous about how these colors would look together, but I'm super into it. My only complaint, I think there was an issue with the ball of yarn that I bought and the striping did not work out on the other sock. We have some weird stripes going on and they fall out of order. Now these are hands down the best pair of socks I have ever made. This is also the Smart Heart socks. I love these. I love the color. I love, I mean, I love the yarn. I just, I don't even know how they got the speckles in here. How do you dye it purple? And then there are also like yellow speckles like how did that not wash out with the purple dye i don't understand how they did it but i love it i love it so much and the pattern's amazing the stars just aligned on this project i wear these socks a lot they are tighter fitting socks and i actually confession i do sometimes wear my socks with shoes especially my birkenstocks so that i can show off my socks and i love wearing them in like the fall and the winter putting on a pair of wool socks wearing my birkenstocks to the grocery store and being all proud I am going to continue making myself like two or three pairs of socks a year. And so I'm not, they're going to get worn and that's okay. And I'm so okay with darning socks. I'm definitely going to do that. I'm actually excited to get my first sock hole so that I can darn socks for the first time. I'm really okay. I'd rather it be worn and loved than treated as overly precious and not appreciated enough. You know these, if you've seen my other videos, this is a pair of two by two rib leg warmers using some hand dyed yarn that I had on hand that I needed to use up. I made a pair for myself. I wore them constantly and I go on walks with a friend in my neighborhood a lot. And I was just talking about how much I love these. And so she wanted a pair and I ended up making her a pair as well for Christmas slash her birthday. Okay, let's talk mittens. These are smiley face mittens. These were self-drafted. They are made with alpaca. They are warm as hell. I actually wore these 
for like heavy duty gardening in the rain where they got muddy and soaking wet and I was tearing down um, grapevines and trimming grapevines and so I'm just shocked that I didn't rip these or damage them and I washed them and they're totally fine and they look great. Uh, I love wearing these. They are incredibly soft. A treat for my hands and they're freaking adorable. Are they not? Have I only made two hats this year? <gasps> I have another hat. I've made three hats this year. <laughs> Cute, basic staple hat. I am obsessed with like thick, um, what do you want to call this? Folded over, the folded over bit. What is that called? I don't remember what it's called. Oh my gosh, but I love it. I love having a thick rim. I wish I could remember the freaking word. I wear this hat all the time. My only issue with hats right now is I don't know how to make my hair look cute while wearing a hat. My hair is at a length where after about five minutes, my hair will do like the 1950s housewife swish at the ends. And I'm just not, I'm not into that. This is a balaclava. I didn't follow a pattern, but I followed a tutorial by Well Love Knits. She did a really great tutorial and I love how her balaclava turned out. This is the warmest thing you'll ever wear. Like... If you live in a colder climate, make a balaclava. Just do it. Can't believe I forgot about this one. I literally finished this less than a week ago. And I'm so excited and I've been wearing it a lot. So I don't know how I did not include it in this. I had True Boo Bamboo yarn laying around that I had to use up. I just bought it because I thought the yarn was interesting. And I did not have enough to make a full garment. And so I was like, all right, I, I got to use this stuff up. I really do. And so I made a hat. And this is the silkiest, softest material in the whole wide world. I really want to make a full garment out of it. I can't stop touching it. No itch on the forehead. Incredibly comfortable to wear. 2 by 2 rib was a great choice. I think 2 by 2 rib is just the most comfortable knit stitch because it can be so stretchy. Takeaways as far as accessories go. Knit socks. I need to keep making them. I love them. I don't love making socks, but it's an easy enough project to take different places. So I work on them during trips I take or I mean I don't take that many trips um or when I go to the doctor's office it's an easy thing that I can just carry with me um leg warmers I should definitely make another pair hats I think I'm pretty good on hats I would love to make some in different colors and just have fun with it now instead of trying to make staple pieces because I think I've successfully made the staple pieces I want regarding accessories and in my mind accessories last a lot longer than my garments do so I think next year I can transition into just having more fun. I would love to do like a really bold statement set of accessories. So doing like bright cherry red hat mittens and scarf or something. Yeah, that's the accessories. Okay, for all the crochet stuff, I don't have any crochet garments. I've never made a crochet garment nor an accessory. All of my crochet stuff is like household items or practical items. So I will show you video clips of those and do a voiceover because I can't like grab them and display. They're usually like fixed in a certain area or it just wouldn't show well on camera. A couple of months ago, one of my cats absolutely decimated a lampshade of mine. And so I repurposed the wire frame from that lampshade and crocheted on a new lampshade. It was improvised shaping using almost exclusively single crochets and... I've been using it for, I think, two months now, and I love this. We previously didn't have a light over in this space, and this room is really dark, but at night, it's the perfect cozy glow in the room. The only possible change that I would make on this moving forward is making it bigger because, to me, the shade of the lamp that looks kind of like a ruffly flower is a bit out of proportion with the room and with the cord cover that I have on there, and I would like to make it look a little bit more proportional, so I think extending it to be a little bit bigger, making each of the layers maybe two or three inches longer would be the perfect way to do that. A super small project I did just to practice making granny squares was making these coasters. I followed Tony Lipsy from Teal Yarn Craft, her granny square tutorial. It's great, super easy to follow. I made four of these and I love having them around in different parts of my apartment. I use a lot of mugs and drink a lot of tea now and mugs make a sound when they hit onto a hard coaster, which is the only thing I previously had was these wood or marble coasters, and I really like having something softer so that it makes a quiet sound when it sets down. Easily my largest and most expensive project this year was making a crochet rug for my living room. It was entirely made with single stitches, and it took 
months to complete as well as hundreds of dollars in yarn. I don't know why I thought this would be cheaper than buying a wool rug. Still, it was completely worth it because I spent a lot of time sitting on the floor in my living room and this is much softer than the carpet in our apartment. And because it's so thick and on top of carpet, it just provides the squishiest, softest surface to chill on with and play with my cats. I have had this rug for months now and I consistently vacuum it on a regular basis. And the type of wear that I am seeing is the type of wear that I am totally okay with. I think over time this may felt and fibers may cross over each other and you're going to lose stitch definition, but I am totally okay with that because it still looks so cozy and loved. And I feel like the more worn it gets, the more cozy it's going to feel. Perhaps the most specific project that I did this year was a crochet basket designed to hold my cat's food. And inside, don't worry, is a plastic liner designed to handle long-term food safe storage. I shockingly love this thing. It's so much easier because we don't have room in this tiny closet to fit a full bag of cat food, nor is it deep enough to have any sort of storage container because it's only eight inches deep. So this is perfect and functional. Last in my crochet roundup is this mushroom purse that I made. I gave myself a random 24 hour challenge because I was bored on a weekend and this is what I came up with. I don't actually have this anymore, hence the not so great footage. I gave it to a friend of mine who really likes mushrooms a lot more than me, so. I made a crochet koi fish. I won't get too much into this one since I literally just released a video about this like two weeks ago, so you can go ahead and watch that if you want to learn more, but he turned out pretty cool. Okay, so in the world of crochet, clearly I have some work to do. I learned how to crochet over 10 years ago, and I've been doing it consistently. But trying to compile all of the crochet items, in my head I was like, I made a lot of crochet stuff this year. And then actually looking at it, I did not. <laughs> I have been slowly ramping up the amount that I crochet over the past couple months. And I think I want to keep that trend going. I don't reach for it as often as I reach for knitting, obviously, as you can tell from this video. And that's because I'm very confident in my knitting ability and so I reach for it a lot more. While I've been doing crochet for a while, I haven't challenged myself in the world of crochet much. And I think moving forward, I should focus more on building my crochet techniques and finding new challenges and trying new stitches and form factors and just trying new things. 2024, crochet. Okay, so here's the deal. I was on a break for a while with releasing videos, I think for like two weeks. And that is because when I went to edit videos for every video I've made so far, my computer crashes constantly. I'm, I'm working with an old laptop that cannot handle editing footage. Every five minutes it crashes, if I'm lucky. Usually it's like every time you do a snip or add something, it crashes. So I actually have a new computer, a whole new PC system arriving tomorrow that I'm so excited about and it's gonna make editing like so fast. And I'm so excited about this for two reasons. One, because I would like to edit faster. I work a full-time job. I don't need to be spending every single night editing videos on top of filming them. Two, I'm gonna love editing so much more. I already really enjoy editing, but I get frustrated after it's been crashing so many times in a row. It's just frustrating. And three, I will finally be able to start doing some more interesting things with editing that I haven't been able to do because my computer just can't handle it. So I am looking forward to that moving forward. 2024 is gonna be a great year. I have a whole schedule written out, all the videos I'm gonna do for the next six months and many planned out beyond that. I am so ready. Something I can't stop thinking about is over Thanksgiving, I brought my crochet stuff to my family trip and I was teaching my little sister how to crochet and she was like, oh my gosh, can I keep this when I gave her the hook to use? And I was just like, oh yeah, yes. Cause I was just so excited that like she would want to learn how to crochet <laughs> and it was part of a set. <laughs> the sets are so cheap. So if she decides to keep up with crochet, what I'm gonna do is just give her that set and buy myself a new set. She can just have it. That whole set was like 20 bucks. So I'm not missing out on much. Now you want to cuddles. Now she wants to cuddle. I spent 30 minutes trying to get her to cuddle with me on the floor or play or do something on the rug because we're doing that all day constantly every day. And the one time that I want her to be on camera specifically, she's like, no, 
I'm not doing this for you. Not for treats, not for love, nothing. No. Come on. Snuggle up. Super random tangent. My mom is the queen of gift giving. She is such a good gift giver. Um, but this year she really outdid herself with a cat toy that is a bird. It's a sandpiper and it like hops up and down and makes bird sounds and its wings flap and it moves on its own. And Pippin has been destroying that thing. I will add some footage but she's a little killer. 